Hi, this is Dolly Weber and welcome back to Strangers in the Oil. Today I'd like to talk about the symbols of modern medicine. Some of the blatant examples of how pagan and demonic and devilish this whole realm is. Certainly to people in the occult or into uh, secret societies, symbols are highly, highly significant. Uh, in Christian faith, the cross, uh, the cross of Jesus is, is significant to most of us because that is, it, it tells it all, it, that exemplifies Jesus. If we're talking just a simple cross, not the cross showing Jesus still on it, but just a simple cross. In the field of medicine, we have some blatant examples of simply how pagan and how demonic the whole realm of modern medicine, yes, modern medicine, is where it has evolved from and the symbols that it still chooses to identify itself with. I'm actually going to get this information directly out of my book. I hope it won't sound like I'm reading it, but I am going to tell the story as I show you these symbols, which I think will shock some of you. One of the symbols of the religious worship of the cult of Asclepius, that was what doctors were a part of. That's what Luke in the Luke the physician was part of the cult of Asclepius. He was a, an Asclepian priest. One of the symbols of that cult was the staff of Asclepius. This was and is a staff or stick entwined with a serpent reaching upward to drink from a potion. Yes, that is a magic potion. According to the story, the god, half god, half human Nephilim Asclepius, traveled in the form of a snake. Fallen angels were historically reported to, in fact, have ability to morph in this way. Remember how Satan himself took on the form of and appeared as a snake in the Garden of Eve? So on a ship traveling up the Tiber River towards Rome, the snake, Asclepius, is said to have slipped off the boat and onto the Tiber Island. That is where the first temple to him was built. Interesting. The symbol, therefore, of the snake was of great importance to the cult of Asclepius. In fact, actual live snakes were brought to these temples and allowed to inhabit them, slithering freely on the floors among the patients, which I talk about in uh, Was Luke a Physician video. That's what Luke did. He was in those temples and, and dealt with those slithering, free, free-to-roam snakes. The staff of Asclepius depicts a snake shedding its skin, denoting rebirth and immortality. This symbolically alludes to the fact that Asclepius was even said to have raised Hippolytus, another first or second generation Nephilim, from the dead. Asclepius was said to have raised up to six men from the dead. Interestingly, the death of Hippolytus, meaning horse liberator, was caused by his rejecting the sexual advances of his stepmother and his ensuing allegation that he had attempted to rape her. Eventually, the truth came out, exonerating the faithful Hippolytus, thus mirroring the biblical story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Asclepius was asked to raise Hippolytus from the dead, and he did so. Okay, now, in English class, they would tell you that all of these things are mythological and they would also probably tell you that Satan is a myth and that he's just part of mythological gods. But a believer knows that Satan is not a myth and neither are other gods that are, were referred to, that people referred to and appealed to in days of old because these were demon entities that actually did respond. They weren't just inhabiting, they weren't just depicted in pillars with faces on them. These were demon gods that actually did act on behalf of the people. Otherwise, people wouldn't, would stop going to them. So as I'm talking to you with these people's names, Asclepius and Hippolytus, they were real demon entities and they are still here, obviously. They don't die. <laughs> these are demonic entities. All right. So because Asclepius had tampered with Zeus's intended control over who enters death and when, Zeus, also a fallen angel god, killed Asclepius with a lightning bolt. Later, Zeus agreed to bring Asclepius back to life and did so, but in another form. 
sending him as a star god to the constellation Ophiuchus, meaning serpent. Then Asclepius further took on the power of an association with rebirth and immortality. This aspect of him alludes also to some of the recurrent symbolisms of the phoenix, whose name associates with Phoenicia and its point of entry for the gods, which is Mount Hermon. So we also have, I'll, I'll be getting or showing a picture of the staff of Hermes, who is now associated with the fallen angels and, and Mount Hermon. So that's a very critical reference that Mount Hermon, that is a very demonic uh, point of geography. Um, the staff of Asclepius is now used by the American Medical Association and many other national medical societies. This symbol, no doubt, was also used and recognized in Luke's day as associated with Asclepius and his cult of modern medicine, or the Asclepian cult. Additionally, it is used by its ancillary emergency organizations and their vehicles in the form of the Star of Life. So uh, I have pictures of that even in other countries. The same staff is used all over the world and even in veterinary medicine, and I'll show a picture of that. Some would argue that the staff of Asclepius relates to the bronze snake, which the Lord instructed Moses to lift up for all those who had been bitten by poisonous snakes. The snakes had been sent by the Lord as a result of the Israelites speaking against God and against Moses, as described in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Many of the Israelites who were bitten had already died. Finally, completely overcome by what they had brought upon themselves, the Israelites went to Moses. They acknowledged that they had what they had done against him and against God, complaining, rebelling, and they asked Moses to ask God to take the snakes away. Moses then did as he was instructed by God and made a bronze or fiery snake. Then he told the Israelites to look at the snake and thereby be healed of their snake bite wounds. And it worked. So in that one particular instance, the symbol, the bronze snake, was used in the gesture by which the father gave them healing. However, the snake itself was not to be remembered for the healing, but rather for their, it was supposed to be remembered for their rebellion and the snakes that their rebellion had brought upon them. Never again do we know of, was there such an instrument, leave alone the symbol of a snake, which was symbol, Satan's symbol, by which there was no symbol by which the Israelites were instructed to seek any answers, including healing. In fact, after Jesus came and completed his work at the cross, we see that everything, including healing, comes entirely by faith. Paul stands as an example of this when bitten by a viper. He had no poultices, no shots, no anti-venom drug, not even any anointing oil that we know of, nothing but the power of Jesus and his blood that as, as was accessed by Paul's faith. So why did the Lord use the bronze snake when he did? And why does it bear such resemblance to the staff of Asclepius? Hmm. In the word of God, Satan is always likened to a snake or a serpent. Also, he is the author of rebellion. In this instance, the snake stood for both. The author of their sin and the trouble, that being the snakes, their sin had gotten them. Now, this is my personal feeling. I said, I believe that as Moses was instructed to lift up the bronze snake for all to look up to, the father was administering healing to the Israelites through a point of remembrance. Surely he wanted to heal them, but he did not want them to quickly forget what had happened. By using the very image of the snake, they received healing while also acknowledging the sin that had brought them to that point of need. The raising of this symbol in the wilderness pointed to the vital difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, which would later be seen through the raising of the cross of Jesus. Looking at the serpent on the pole imparted healing through that which brought death, while looking to the cross, which was to come, would impart healing through that which brings life. No doubt Apollo, in his copycat fashion, had the bronze snake idea in mind when inspiring the staff of Asclepius. Surely it appealed to him as a boasting reminder of himself, his inciting rebellious spirit, and the trouble he delights in causing with it. 
Further, as he loves to twist the truth, he also seized the opportunity to use the snake, which the Lord intended for one purpose, a lesson and a reminder to beware of the snake who is Satan. And Apollo used it for another, an actual symbolic source of healing. The only symbols the Word of God uses consistently for healing are the oil, the cross of Jesus, and sometimes water. I believe Satan took the one-time use of the snake in reference to healing and blew it way out of proportion to bring honor to himself. It bears his signature of taking something the Lord made, twisting it, and using it for his own purpose. Uh, then I have a picture of, uh, the, uh, of Adam and Eve at the tree and the snake around the tree, and it looks remarkably like the staff of Asclepius. So the whole theme of Satan, the, re the source of rebellion, and the, just the Satan, <laughs> the snake, uh, is all over these medical symbols. It's, it's really incredible. Other national health organizations around the world use the staff of Asclepius, including the World Health Organization. So I've got one by the Royal Australian Air Force, um, the Medical Council of New Zealand, the Canadian Medical Association, the Veterinary Medicine in Turkey. They all have it. Now, there is another snake-oriented symbol, and that is used in modern medicine. It's the caduceus, or two copulating snakes. Did you ever know that? We've all seen, you know, I'm sure you've seen the AMA with one stick and one snake. Well, there's also a symbol in medical, for medical agencies, where there's two snakes, and they're actually having sex. They're two copulating snakes wrapped around a pole. So the one snake, that just got even better. Though not considered by all to be an official symbol for modern medicine, at least not yet, it is nevertheless used by more commercial medical entities. The caduceus has tremendous implications in its predominantly occultic and magical roots and associations. Okay, time out here. <laughs> Does this sound like God to you? Do, do all of these associations... All of these, you know, think back to the Maccabees and the battle that the one battle that they won, that they lost rather, and there were 36 men that died. And when Judas Maccabeus looked at their belts, to the 36 men who died to their belt was strapped a tiny little idol, a tiny little symbol. So look at these symbols that we've got that are full of Satan. They're completely glorifying Satan. They have nothing to do with God. How in the world could a holy God, to can our holy God even look upon this or put up with it, leave alone, ordain a member of this whole realm to be instruments of his healing just by the symbols alone? This is amazing to me. Anyway, getting back to those two snakes having sex, according to the story, Tiresias, who was a seer, found two snakes who were copulating. He wanted to separate the snakes, so he stuck his staff between them. The magic caused thereby turned him into a woman, which he remained to be for seven years. All right, so now we got even more. We got magic. And let, let no mistake be made, any users of magic arts, they go to hell, okay? Revelation's clear about that with a pharmakeia. It, magic is not fun. There's nothing good about magic. So we've got magic introduced here. And then uh, changing gender. Because the guy that put a stick between them, it changed him into a woman. At the end of that time, he was able to repeat the act and was reversed back to being a male. Okay, so we've got gender change represented in that medical symbol. Thus, the symbol has become to be regarded as immensely powerful. Not only does it have the ability to reverse physical polarities of male and female, but it is also a powerful phallic symbol, or that's a blatant symbol of the male sex organ. As such, it has been associated with the pagan god Ishtar, giving argument to its use in medicine for its procreative connotation. As a phallic symbol, it alone gives indication of a consistent theme of Nephilim as they have interacted with mankind and attempted to antagonize the God of the Bible. 
Furthermore, in studying the effects on man's thinking and his morals by these Nephilim, researchers have observed their promotion of homosexuality on mankind, which directly ties in with the sex change mythology of this symbol as well. All right, I go into a little bit more detail uh, on that, but I wanted to skip down and mention about the uh, phallic symbol of Hermes. This symbol is also referred to the caduceus of Hermes. The name Hermes is a variation of the name Hermon, which means forbidden place. Jerome, the translator of the Latin Vulgate Bible, called it anathema, meaning vehement denunciation or curse. Okay, so this is all interrelated with another kind of medical symbol with, you, you'll probably recognize it off a picture here of a guy uh, often with wings on his head and he's holding up a big staff and there's a snake on it again. And this all relates to Mount Hermon which, according to the Book of Enoch, was the known port of entry for a group of wicked angels who corrupted the human race in the days of Noah. Mount Hermon is still the place where evil continually rains down, as it is at the area of the Syrians and the Hezbollah. So uh, this thing goes deep, but the further you go, the more wickedness you, you see, the more evil, the more satanic it is. And I just, I, I, just nod my head i just can't uh, imagine that people could even fathom that the holy god of the bible could anyway put up with this finally the caduceus of hermes has been credited with particular cultic significance and powers including channeling at the end of the wand it signified its mind or the mind and its communication by intellection with the god Hermes by the wings thereof. Then I also have a variation of this staff, a particular phallic rod is closely associated, associated with witchcraft, uh, new age, and the occult. In fact, the actual item is available in magic stores for specific occult purposes. So are we getting holy here? Has anybody found anything possibly holy here? Um, Okay, and one last thing is that when you look at the caduceus uh, as it's intertwined up, up the staff, it actually makes the figure eight. It resembles an eight, and uh, that is significant in the realm of, um, it. well, it, it represents DNA, and also that is uh, associated with alchemy which is a form of uh, kind of a mixture of philosophy and witchcraft. So here we've got more witchcraft. So it's just everywhere. And I, I do have a picture uh, that I'll show, uh, which depicts the competition between the staff of Asclepius, the single snack, snake, and the caduceus, uh, where they're in some weird kind of competition. It's a rather old depiction. So uh, I'm sure there's more about that you know for anyone who wanted to delve further into it but hopefully i'm presenting enough to you to show you this has nothing to do with god this is as far from holiness as as anything could be if the lord works on his own ch children he puts us through the fire he he takes us through the desert he works on us he purges us he cleanses us he prepares us to be used by him how in the world is he taking these clowns coming from this realm of unholiness and wickedness and magic and occultism? How in the world would he want to be using this realm? All of these symbols on their own are so heavily laden with occult and paganism. I would ask the reader, what believer would want to have these in his or her home? Their stationery, their business card, or a placard on their wall? What holy God-fearing believer would ever think of swearing an oath to an agency which chooses any of these symbols as its signature, leave alone all of them? How in the world could Luke have left the holy presence and part of Jesus and participated in such a realm with its own pagan associations identified by these specific statues and widely known satanic symbols without Luke's conviction and repentance. Which Jesus do you know 
who could condone or ignore, leave alone, institute all of this for his children. Furthermore, in the face of the recurrent rod of Hermes and staff of Asclepius in this clearly pagan realm, do we not see a blatant counterfeit? Antichrist? Blasphemy to the God of the Bible, to whom we should say like David did, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, verse 4, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And yet somehow in this medical realm, they manage to come up with the rod of Caduceus and the staff, Asclepius. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to close this video right now and I'm showing you a picture, a depiction called The History of Modern Medicine. And it was commissioned, it was a work that was commissioned by a man, uh, for a man to do. His name was Conrad A. Albrizio in 1966. It, this says it all. In this picture, you can see the blatancy of where the whole modern medicine has come from, what it represents. Do you, you look at this picture and you tell me, do you see anything of God here? Do you see anything of righteousness? Is there anything that remotely resembles Jesus or his work on the cross or what he instructed us? Is there anything giving God in this picture? And by their own standards, they are saying, they endorse this as this is the history of modern medicine. Brothers and sisters, it's time we take a look at this and ask the Lord to clear our eyes, to take the spell off of us and show us clearly, Lord, is this realm, do you want us to have anything to do with this realm? Did you, could you possibly have given us this realm? that not only fails to acknowledge you, but it acknowledges all your enemies. It acknowledges Satan. How in the world, how in the world could this be from the Lord? I urge you, I prayerfully urge you, this is an idol that has been in our camp for centuries. And just because the Lord has been merciful and has still done a lot of work, in our hearts and lives, in other ways, it has prevented him from healing us because he cannot move when we have gone to another God. This is another God. This is another realm. This is a, a system from hell. And thankfully, it's blatant enough in these symbols to, to show itself. And yet, I don't know how, you know, there will still be many that will say, oh, that's okay. God doesn't mind that. But surely a true believer would look at this and say, whoa, my God doesn't like that. My God would not put up with this. I didn't realize that this is where that comes from. It's not science. It is a cult. Science doesn't make you swear an oath to gods and goddesses. Science doesn't make you swear any oath. But this is why, because it is part of a god, of a false god, but they're demons. It's part of a realm that was instituted centuries ago. And their purpose is to perpetuate this realm. And that's why they want people to swear that oath. Because it's a covenant and they want to make sure that those demon gods are still upheld. And their hand is allowed to predominate in this field, which has nothing to do with the Lord. I, I trust that you will truly prayerfully consider this and ask the Lord, to show you the truth, if you haven't already. I look forward to talking to you next time. God bless you.